You're not the saviour, I imagined. Yeah, well, life's full of disappointments. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. In the last episode, Henry managed to convince Wolflin to leave Sohanish's lands by diplomacy, sparing Captain Bernard's men from the risk of death. Sohanish had been generous to Henry. Thank you, sir. And this also gave Henry the chance to rest from his tribulations and spend some quality time with his love, Teresa. I love it here by the water. But how come you've been so quiet the whole time? What's on your mind? You're on my mind. Oh? <laughs> in what way? Oh, you know. How pretty you look in that. Ah. You think I look pretty, do you? Yeah. Especially when... when you laugh. <laughs> I was afraid you'd say especially when you've no clothes on. <laughs> well, now that you mention it... Come here, you charmer. This talking thing isn't just useful in getting rid of ugly robber barons. But as tempting as it might seem to idle away the time with Teresa, Henry has other duties demanding his attention. There's still the matter of finding the coin counterfeiters and the missing silver scallops. He didn't know who or where the counterfeiters were, but there was a solid lead pointing to the abandoned mines of scallops. His travels would take him nearby to previous Slavets, and it was a good opportunity to look into Marius' progress, now that it procured sufficient manpower for him. It's clear that much work has been done here, and we're off to a good start. On speaking to Marius, it seems that he wants a pay rise. Sir Divish guaranteed me a fixed income. What's more, this job is an exceptionally big one. Well, as you said yourself, it's just a continuation of your work for Sir Divish, so I see no reason to change the conditions now. Even though it's much more work and responsibility? You can't be serious. All right. This amount ought to correspond to your work. It seems we understand each other. I agree. If you don't have a sufficiently high speech skill, you'll end up paying him quite a bit per day. But it doesn't matter in the long term, and you'll be making more than enough money. You can take a bard potion before speaking to him if you want. Building a settlement requires more than just clearing the land and overpaying the locator though. The skeleton rata folk are still living in tents, and all the buildings we'll need to construct to require wood. Luckily we're in the middle of the woods. So we can solve that by assigning a few of them to work as volunteers. Next is the bridge. We need it before we're going to do more than just chop down a few trees in the middle of nowhere. Proper trading requires a bridge strong enough to support fully laden wagons. <laughs> the urgency of food is driven home to Henry when he discovers that the village folk are resorting to poaching in order to get enough food. There's another unpleasant matter for you to handle. It's nothing too terrible, I hope. That's for you to decide, Master Bailiff. As you know, the woods and everything in them belong to our liege lord. He gave you the right to make use of them. But as far as I know, no one else is allowed to hunt there. Let me guess. Some of our fold are putting game on their tables from our woods, and I have to deal with them. Just so. A case like this ought to be judged by his lordship himself, but I fear Sir Divish might be a little too strict in this matter. We'll confiscate the poached game and put the fear of God into the culprit so they don't do it again. No point in carrying it any higher. We should keep our own affairs in order. A wise decision, Henry. I'll see to it. That's a capital crime, but the reasons are understandable enough to him, and Henry's aware that he would have hung more than a few times before he became licensed to hunt as Huntsmaster. A warning will suffice at this point, but it's paramount to construct a trading post to bring enough food to feed the villagers.
Now that we have a trading post and a road for wagons, we have need for Henry to arrange for some food to be delivered to the town. He'd have to arrange for grain, meat, charcoal and stone for future growth. The villagers could then use those goods for baking bread, smithing to help the town grow, and a garrison to keep it safe. But before he can devote himself to that, he needs to conclude the matter of inspecting the silver works and making sure that there's no ties to the fake coinage. Henry sets off early in the morning, with an eye on paying his respects at his parents' grave in Scalots. It turns out that the Tambo guard are doing their bit to keep the town safe, but unfortunately they can't be there all the time. It's time to visit the linden tree at what used to be his house in modern recent times. Where on earth is Henry? I need him to run some errands. It looks like he was out all evening, drinking like a lord. Get up or I'll come get you up, slug of bed. You've been at that sword play again, haven't you? I want to end my days in Scalit, here beneath the linden tree and by your mother's side. Forgive me for everything. I'll never run away again. Get up now. There's work to be done. After a few minutes of prayer, he sets off to inspect the processing works where the silver ore was crushed and melted for refinement. Looks like they smashed things up nicely. Looks like other bandits have taken up residence, but making use of the narrow entrance, he makes quick work of them. This is in surprisingly good condition. The machinery seems to be generally intact, surprisingly enough. It makes sense since Sigismund left the very next day after burning skeletons, so a thorough destruction was unlikely. Going further towards the waterworks used to watch the war. Hmm. This doesn't look too bad. I guess those bastards didn't want to get soaked. Seems they had a good go at wrecking this, but it's still standing. He finds a few more brigands infesting the place. They're not as well armed as the others, and it only takes a few shots from his bow to scare them off. There's still no signs of silver being processed, but Master Paper did mention one shaft he wanted inspected. It seems that there's a guard though. Bart, what do you want? I'm here by order of Sir Radzig and Master Fafar. And who are you? I... who am I? I'm keeping guard here so no rogues get in to steal the silver. That's very commendable. I'll take you to Master Fafar so he can reward you. But I... I can't go anywhere. Who would stand watch if I left my post? That's strange. Master Fafar never mentioned the sending a guard. And if he had, he wanted to have asked Henry to inspect his shaft. It seems that not all the miners have fled. So Henry sets about finding whoever is giving the orders. And after riding into the hills, he finds a camp with Scarlet's miners in hiding. The only woman in the camp seems a little more open to conversation. What's a woman doing here with all these men? Why shouldn't I be? I'm as scared to stick my nose outside as any man. You could all take refuge in Sasa or Ratoy. And what if something happens to us along the way? What if we run into a pack of cutthroats? What then? But that could... Besides, the rest of them will have to come back here eventually. The mines can't stand idle forever. We'll make do here until then. Where's your husband? What do you want of him? I want to ask him what's going on here. Well then you'd best start praying. He got killed when they stormed Scarlet's. Oh, um, I'm very sorry. So am I. He was a good man. So you'll have to make do with asking me. What's been happening here? Apart from us losing everything, living in fear of sticking our noses outside and waiting for folk to come back again. Uh, yes? Nothing. So why didn't you say that straight away? Why should I? You bluff your way in here and start asking questions like you own the place and it never crosses your mind you might not be welcome. But I'm only... Only what? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean it like that. Well, perhaps you didn't. But nothing ever happens here. If anyone hears anything, we run and hide like rabbits. And otherwise, we just sit on our asses. What are you doing here? Why are you so interested? Sir Radzig sent me here to look around. Radzig, eh? Well, what do you know? And you're going to take a look at the mine? Or are you looking for people? Well, Master Fafar asked me to look the place over. Master my ass. A dolt, that's what he is. 
They leave the folk here, and no one so much as comes to check on them. But when it comes to Silver, they send their men at once. Well, he probably assumed everyone was killed, or, or they'd fled. Lovely thought, that is. A few of them did die, mind, waiting for someone to turn up. You can't blame anyone for that. Of course we can. There's always someone to blame. Take care. But she's quite resentful of Sir Radzik and the nobility. Probably unfairly, but they've suffered quite a lot. Ah, shit, sod off! It's strange that they're all sleeping in broad daylight. What are they doing at night? What are you doing here? What do you mean? Why are you lurking round here instead of going home? We are home. We live here. But Sir Radzig led all the survivors away from here. Those who live round the castle, maybe. But the mine shifts here are packed with dead bodies. Why are you here? Maybe because we've got nowhere else to go. Some of your neighbours are in Ratai. And are they doing well there? They're getting by. Why we get by here? So why go and rely on the charity of strangers? What's happened here? They raided the place. Haven't you heard? Well, that was weeks ago. What of it? Nobody's come back so far, and we can't keep the place running on our own. It looks like Nemoy, the foreman of the mines, is still in charge, and the miners are following him. Why are you waking me? Go away! But they seem quite hostile to Henry and Sir Radzik. What are you doing here? Not so fast, lad. I'm in charge round here, so I'll do the asking. And the question is, what are you doing here? Come to steal the silver, have you? I've come on the warrant of Sir Radzig and Master Fafar to look around. So tell me why you're loitering here and not with your master. Why would I be with him? He ran off and left us here for the cutthroats and starvation. We are just lucky we managed to hide and find some supplies. Well, I won't defend everything Sir Radzig's done. He forbade me to go back and bury my own parents. Was I meant to leave them lying there for the crows? There's been a lot of deaths here, and some of the shafts are, well, a nightmare. What happened? We buried all we could, but some will have to wait. I'm very sorry to hear that, but I still need to know about the mines. I have my duty, and I intend to honour it. It's a shame you aren't so dutiful to a better master. But very well then. Only one of the mine galleries around Scalitz is accessible. I sent my man to guard it. And have you met anyone else in the mines? Only one. But he was a miner too, and he joined us. Tell the sentry that Nemoy sent you and he'll leave you be. Good luck. It's all very strange to Henry, but Nemoy seems alright with Henry going to the mines. So there's clearly nothing to be done other than to get on with the Master Fafir's tasks. The corridor is suitably dark, but eventually Henry is interrupted by a ruckus above. I would say, don't push me. You're out to kill us all. Don't push me. Possession has worked, you fine. Don't push me. No. Ah! Hey. Hey, you there. What have you done? Me? It wasn't me. It must have been one of your lot pushed him down the shaft. If you hadn't come sniffing around, none of this would have happened. What's my being here got to do with it? What the fuck's been going on? Whatever it is, now you've got a murder to answer for. Only if someone finds out. Listen, neighbours, don't be stupid. You don't want to add another murder to the Count. It could have been an accident. You know that was no accident. Or maybe you came to blows. Pushed him down, and then we had to stop you. That's ridiculous. If you all clear off out of here, I promise nobody will be asking what happened. Why add to your troubles? Hey! Where are you going? You're not going to abandon us, are you? Not after all the good times we've had together? Don't you remember how we took care of everyone? Hey! He manages to convince one to not attempt murder. But the other bastards seem pretty intent on silencing whatever Henry might report. Is someone there? Oh.
He finally makes it out and hurries back to the camp before they flee. But there's only the woman he spoke to earlier. Jesus Christ, your clothes. Were you assaulted? Damn bandits, may they burn in hell. No one stayed behind here but you. Why didn't you run while you could? I hardly know myself. Maybe I just wanted to let you know we weren't all villains here. And why were you here in the first place? Why did you want to kill me? We were holed up here. And also, we were helping them I mine the silver. But that's a capital crime. And besides, it's a hell of a job. A dozen of you could hardly manage it. Just before the raid, we hit on a vein of pure silver. That's much easier to deal with. So when the killers came through here, some folk left. And those who stayed were the ones who knew about it. You too? They talked me into it. Because I helped my man with the smelting. I can do it as well as he could. Did you see what happened here? Who pushed Nemoy down the shaft? There's no point lying about it, I suppose. I was the one who pushed him. But I didn't mean to push him all the way down. It was just that he kept shouting how if we killed you, we'd get our peace and calm back, and we'd be able to mine some more. But... But what? No one wanted to. They all wanted to leave. That's why we moved up here. People don't get on with one another for too long down there. I can well imagine. I don't think Nemoi ever cared much for people. Not even about the silver. It was as if all he truly cared about was doing as much harm as he could. You probably did the right thing. But why did you agree? Don't you know you could burn at the stake for it? What's the difference between dying of starvation or at the stake? But if you'd gone to Ratai or Sasau... And then what? They killed my husband. And I'd have to find another. And now I have nothing. So who'd want me? Everything we put aside is gone. But that's no reason to do something so drastic. Lad, you don't know how the world is. Long before anyone shows interest, I'll have a hill for a belly. And people will talk. Whether the child was made in wedlock or not. But if I had a decent dowry, I might even get to pick and choose. So what am I to do with you now? Do you mean to make me regret I didn't flee? I don't know. You didn't steal any silver. Or did you? None. It all ended up in one keg. Because Nemoy knew some man that would buy it. And what did he do with it? You can't hide a keg of silver under your cloak. How should I know? But they say Nemoy had known the fellow a while. He'd most likely been stealing for some time. And where's the keg now? I don't know. It was buried in some heap around here, but maybe it got passed on by now. They never let me in on that side of things. It seems rather harsh to punish her for staying back to telling the truth, so Henry decides that letting her go is the right thing to do. At least he knows what the real story was, and all the signs point to someone buying silver by the barrel. And silver is used in the forging of the coins behind the previous targets. But on the way back, Henry can take care of some of his own business. Charcoal is needed by the future smithy of previous targets. It costs a hefty bunch, but it'll be the rock on which the rest of the town is built. I'd like to buy charcoal from you. Of course, Henry, anything for you. It might be more than you think. How much charcoal could you possibly need? Five bags. On a regular basis. Haven't you noticed winter is over? There's a new forge in Privislavitz, and I need to supply it with charcoal, seeing as how I'm the bailiff. Bailiff, eh? Well, I never. Congratulations. Oh, it's not a bed of roses, but thanks. All right, but we can't let you have that amount for nothing, even if you did help us with ginger. Don't worry, I wouldn't expect that. How are you going to haul the charcoal? I've got a merchant of my own. He'll come here regularly with a wagon to pick it up. You just have to load it for him. As you wish. About the price... That's a bit much. There ain't much I can do about it. You won't get it cheaper anywhere else. That's what charcoal costs these days. Deal. All right, we'll send the first load as soon as your wagon gets here. It's also possible to recruit specialists to improve the various jobs in the town. One of these is Raspberry, the woodsman who Henry spoke to while searching for Riki oh so long ago. Would you like to go to Privislavitz and work as a woodcutter? I'll do it. All right, so you can... Hang on, that's it. 
No questions, no demands? I... I've got one question. When do I start? I have a feeling there's something you're not telling me. Oh, all right. It's true. It's just that... It'd suit me to get the hell out of here right now. The thing is, this one time, I had a bit of a roll in the hay with the baker's daughter, and... Well... Damn it all. I mean, it could be any fellow who got her in the family way. Everyone knows she'll go with anyone who's got two groschen to rub together. Well, to cut a long story short, I'd rather make myself scarce before her pa sets some hired brutes on me. He's rather quick to accept the offer, but I'm sure that things will be fine. Back in Ratai, we can also recruit Cornelius to manage a new trading post. He's good with numbers and should jump at the chance to keep a portion of the profits. Listen, wouldn't you like to move to Pribislavis? I need someone there who's able to read and write and do sums. If you can do that, you'd make a good merchant to handle building materials. That's nearly the same job I had at the Scalitz Mines. And they were the most profitable mines for miles around. True. We don't have any mines, of course, but if you could handle the trade, that would help me a lot. I know enough about trade, but I won't work for nothing. What are you offering? Naturally, you'll earn coin enough. Don't tell me you want to spend the rest of your life struggling here. I know you're a fellow who recognises a good opportunity, and that's exactly what this is. Ha! You're right about that. Very well, I'll move there. It don't look like we'll be going back to Scalitz anytime soon anyway. If you didn't give him a job carrying water, it's possible that he's constantly asleep. So it's wise to give him something to do until you can recruit him. Thunder the winch can miss out. Henry's not afraid of him. There's also miserable Kunesh. He's no accountant or rocket scientist, but he's good with his arms and can help cut wood. Look here, Kunesh. I can't watch you wasting away here anymore. How would you like a job? Working for you? Where? In Pribislavitz. We're rebuilding the whole settlement. You could maybe work there as a woodcutter. Oh, I could cut wood. But what's it worth to you? What do you mean, what's it worth? I'm offering you a new life. For once in your life, swallow your pride and seize the opportunity while you still can. It's easy for you to say. Hmm. You're right, lad. Though I hate to admit it. Ever since my old woman left, I've had the devil riding on my back. But you leave me my booze. What else have I got in life? As long as there's ale to wash down the dust, I'll work for you. All right. I'll take you. He needs a bit of prompting to swallow his pride and work for you. But to his credit, he does see sense, eventually. But let's not forget to report to Master Faithbar. I'm here about the mine. Excellent. So what did you find out? It's been plundered and wrecked, but everything can be fixed. It'll be quite a job, but at least it won't have to be rebuilt from scratch. That's a weight off my mind. And did you see anyone there? Thieves or suspicious types? Nemoy and his gang were stealing silver there. The vermin. I thought as much. Did you bring him here? I tried to, but he was having none of it. He didn't want to burn, so he tried to kill me. Well, I'm glad he didn't succeed. But now I won't be able to find out anything. Oh, well. Can't be helped, I suppose. About my reward for the investigation? Yes, of course. Actually, I don't believe any reward was mentioned. On the other hand, you've surveyed everything as I asked, and that deserves a groschen or two. And the silver is still there somewhere. Well, that is good. It'll take us a while to find it, but you deserve something for that as well. And they tried to murder me. Yes, of course. It's a sad world we live in. I'm sure you deserve a little extra coin for it. The dialogue makes much more sense if you take the hidden option of finding the miners' camp and speaking to them or before venturing into the mines. By the way, that's one loose end tied in the quest for the counterfeiters. On the way to Sasso, you can stop by Ledechko and get the cheapest meat cattle in the county. It might seem pointless if you go for the bakery, but having cattle helps the woodcutters be more profitable. So there's a net gain in getting cattle from Ludechko, even if it's not slaughtered for meat. I'd like to buy some livestock. Could you arrange that? Maybe. What are you after? Cattle, pigs, poultry, everything. <laughs> Starting a farm, are you? <laughs> Swords into plowshares? No, no. It's not for me. It's for the village of Pribislavitz. What? For the whole village? Aye. A few dozen people at least. Well now, uh, that's no laughing matter. But it can be done. 
Although, they might not be the best animals. What do you mean, not the best? Well, it's like this. I've got to supply meat for the Lord's table, too. And the gentry in Ledechko want the best. So what's left for me, then? The animals might not be as good as what you'd get somewhere else. I'll sell you older beasts, ones that ain't so fat and the like. Or ones no one wants to buy, because they don't like the look of them. That's how it is. But for that, I'll give you all the better price. Have you got someone to herd the livestock there for you? I've got a merchant to arrange it. So we'll shake on it? Deal. The cheapest grind is available in Samopesh. The belly is a bit thick, but who cares? As long as he's willing to sell us grain cheaply, there's no harm in going along. Have you got any grain to sell? You want it for yourself? No, it's not for me. It's for the villagers in Pribislavitz. They need regular supplies. And what have you got to do with that? So Divish put me in charge. He put you in charge of hauling grain? No, he, um... Oh, look, it doesn't matter. Can we buy from you? <sighs> it's all the same to me. I can let you have some of the crop. How much do you need? Well, I'll need uh, fodder for horses, at least ten strong animals, and wheat for the baker. He'll have to bake for the whole village. My word. You must be a trustworthy wagoner if his lordship trusts you with a deal like that. Yeah, that's me. How are you going to haul it from here? I've arranged it with a merchant who does just this kind of work. I don't mind sending you part of our crop, but it'll cost something. Well, that's a reasonable price. We'll shake on it then. That leaves only stone unaccounted for amongst the supplies we need. The Viserys Knight, this Ulrich, is waiting for Henry at the Sasha Wagoners Inn as promised. He's been busy, it seems, and has several leads that we can follow. So, what did Master Pfeiffer have to say? I consulted him, and we definitely have a starting point. Tell me more. Master Pfeiffer found out they need copper sheets for the core of the coins, and quicksilver for the alma... alma... Uh, uh, the other part? I see. They have such materials at the monastery. Exactly. That's why I'm interested in the local forges. Yes, that is good. Yesterday, I heard people from the craftsman's yard by the monastery complaining. They said they could not sleep at night because the blacksmith works all the time till dawn. I see. That's certainly worth asking about. Have you heard anything else? You said they use quicksilver. There is a hey. painter lodging here who is painting the church in Ujits. I heard him complain also. He said that he went to the monastery for quicksilver and it was all well, gone. Well, that's something to follow up as well. Thanks. I hear you've had some problems with the supply of quicksilver. Problems? I should say so. For the third time this month, they've told me they've none. There's no quicksilver to be had, they said. And who exactly are you talking about? Who's holding back the goods on you? The monastery overseer, or his assistant, more like. So what did the overseer oh, have to say to you? Nothing. Apparently he doesn't deal with such trifles. Leaves it all to his assistant, the pompous git. Surely such valuable material can't just vanish. Where can it be? I wish I knew. Every time I ask for the red paint, there's a different reason why they haven't got the quicksilver to mix it. Once they said the goods never arrived, and another time that the wagon carrying that was ambushed. Then it went astray somewhere. And you think they're lying? Jesus, what do I know? But it seems pretty strange to me. Three times in a row the same thing goes missing. There's bad luck and then there's something else. What do you need Quicksilver for? I don't. They do. It makes up the red pigment for me. I'm painting the church in Ujits. Can you imagine how stupid those biblical scenes look without red? Not really. Yeah. I'd be glad you can't. My eyes are just to imagine it. The monastery seems to be short of quicksilver. Odd that. Do you have any quicksilver in stock? Who's asking? Nobody. I'm just asking. Then I don't have any. That sounds almost as if you don't want to sell it to me. It's not that I don't want to. It's that I can't. But a quick look in the cellars shows that to be a lie. Vessels with quicksilver in them. And when confronted, the overseer's hand spills the beans. Listen, about that quicksilver. I've already told you, I've none to sell you. You can't sell me any. That's odd, since there's a whole shelf full of it in the custodian's cellar. What? You, you can't go snooping in there without permission. 
The bailiff will hear of this. All right. While you're at it, you can turn yourself in. Me? For what? What do you think? Not only are you cheating the monastery, but you're also working hand in hand with the coin foraging gang. Forging gang? What the hell are you talking about? Don't play the innocent. What do you think your accomplices want Quicksilver for? Jesus. But uh, I didn't know anything about any counterfeiting. For your sake, I hope that's true. Now tell me what's been going on. I swear, I, I wouldn't normally do anything like that. Get to the point. Uh, they came for me at noon, directly to the office. The overseer was somewhere on his rounds. Some night, it was, without a crest, armed. He called himself Sir Yezhek, and he had a lackey with him called Rapporta, a scruffy fellow with a yellow cape, always whistling he was. They told me they wanted all the quicksilver we order for the monastery. Of course, I told him that wouldn't be possible. And then what, did they threaten you? Uh, not at first. They tried to bribe me, and when I refused, they started threatening. How did you hand it over to them? I take it up the hill behind the monastery here. There's a big tree there with a small chapel underneath. Sometimes Rapporta is there waiting for me. If not, I leave it there. What did they threaten you with? They said they know people in the monastery. That they'd have me thrown out and beaten for stealing. And you had been stealing? I mean, before then? You know how it is. I work my fingers to the bone and they pay me a pittance. So they knew about you? Yes, they knew my name, everything. There's a couple of suspicious fellows at the camp. Admiring the views, they say. Why are you just sitting around? Why not? Admiring the view. People just do not appreciate a lovely view these days. Does the name Rapata ring any bells for you? Rapata, you say? Rapata. Hmm. Nope, I can't hear any bells ringing at all. Ignorance is bliss. Wise words. Really? You've missed your vocation. You should have been a preacher. Look, you little jester. I'm investigating a crime against the king on the direct orders of Sir Radzik. Are you really going to keep pretending you don't know anything? Hang on. What's all this about a crime against the king? I'm just keeping an eye on things. When a wagon comes in, I'll make sure nobody robs it. I get a commission for that. That's it. See? That didn't hurt a bit. Where's Rapata? I don't know. He's been staying in town lately. He hardly ever shows up here. It seems he's keeping an eye on someone there. But I don't know who. Who comes to fetch them? I don't know. Some people. They don't speak. Just look mean. Take the goods and go. Bit of friendly advice. You're wasting your time here. Rapper to Scarpet and won't be coming back this way anytime soon. You might as well pack up and go home. What? The bastard owes me a dozen groschen. Damn it. Now what? Well, no use hanging around here anyway. In any case, thanks for the information. I could have been stuck here for weeks. But they're just pawns in this game, so it's best to just get them to leave. It doesn't hurt to take a look around, but it turns out that the bandit was most likely telling the truth. There's three smiths in the town. Do you work any copper here, Master Blacksmith? Why do you ask? I'd want to commission you to make something. Then you'd best go elsewhere. I never use copper. That's not what I heard. What? I was told in town that you bought all the other blacksmiths copper. I'm being made a fool of yet again, it seems. Anything else? I still have work to do. While Zack denies any involvement with copper, the other smiths aren't so reticent to spill the beans. Do you ever work with copper here? No, and even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Zack from the Monastery Craftsman's Yard has bought out all the copper. Do you make anything out of copper, Master? I do a bit of damascene decor sometimes. Why do you ask? I'm looking for someone who could do me some copper sheets. Well, that's pretty rough and ready work. I wouldn't waste my time with it. But go and ask Zack from the Craftsman's Yard by the Monastery. He's bought up all the copper to be had around here anyway. There's two ways to get to the bottom of this. If they are actually working with copper, then it must be stored somewhere.
A quick look in the shed can reveal the copper, though that makes Zack a bit unhappy. Hmm, copper. And quite a lot of it. I wonder what Zack will have to say about this. Your father says you don't work any copper. We don't. I've heard differently around town. They say your father's brought up all the copper to be had. Are you calling me a liar? Or my father? You're asking for it, boy. And that copper in your barn? What have you to say about that? You thieving bastard! What are you doing snooping around our barn? Maybe. So back to that copper, Master Blacksmith. What? I thought I told you I don't work with copper. I see. Then it's a little odd that you have baskets full of raw copper in the shed round the back. You've been in my barn? Best make a head start before I talk to the bailiff. Your workshop's supplying a counterfeiting gang. I'm not going anywhere until you tell me the truth. All right. I suppose there's no point lying. Alternatively, you can take the hint that Ulrich gave us. There's someone working late at night at the smithy, and if you come back in the early hours of the morning after 2am, then you'll see them working hard, suspiciously hard, and you can confront them with your own forging experience. What? I thought I told you I don't work with copper. I grew up in a smithy, and I'm not stupid. What do you mean? I've never yet seen a forge where they worked after dark. We have a lot to do. Really? And what about that smell? Like I said, I was raised in a smithy. I know the whiff of smelting copper. All right. I suppose there's no point lying. We do make copper sheets here, and I wanted to keep it quiet. Why? Pays me good money, and the people I do it for. I wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of them. Did they threaten you? They didn't have to. Just by the look of them, I could say I needed to shut my mouth and do what they wanted. And did they ever tell you who they were? Do you know where to find them? I know a little. I'd show some understanding. There's nothing but trouble in it for me. I'll lose the work and be left looking over my shoulder for some thugs to come and burn down my house. Or worse. Whichever way you manage to convince Zack, he wants a favour in return. He wants Henry to sort out the long-running dispute with Mas Wata, the resident armourer. You can help me with a certain small matter. One that'll cover up for my loss of earnings. So what are we talking about? I recently tried to buy Master Armourer Otto Rabstein's business for my son Vitas, but that old fool wouldn't listen to reason. He said he couldn't understand his legacy being taken over by a clod like my Vitas. Despite the insult, I doubled my offer, but Master Otto still wouldn't budge. And what is it you need from me? I thought I'd show Otto that Vitas isn't such a dolt as he thinks, but for that I need someone experienced in combat. What's your plan? Otter's busy making a very pretty suit of armour for the bailiff. So I was thinking, if we could show that pretty armour of his is absolutely useless, he'd be disgraced. And how am I supposed to see to that? Well, I would reckon we'd arrange a duel of champions with bludgeons. You'll put on Vitus's armour, and Otter will send his champion in that tin shit of his. You invite the bailiff to watch, and Otto will be made a laughingstock in front of everyone. And what do I get out of it? What we already agreed. I'll give up dealing in copper, and I'll tell you everything I know about what's been going on. There's a number of ways to deal with the situation. The most straightforward one is just to battle water on Zack's behalf. Master Armourer, I have a message for you from Blacksmith Zack. If it's another one of his so-called generous offers, you can go straight back and tell him I'm not selling, and that's that. No, this is another matter. Vitus wants to challenge you to a duel. What? <laughs> Me fight with that brat? Zack must have lost his mind entirely. That's not how it will be. The real duel will be between your pieces of handiwork. How's that? It will be a duel with bludgeons. No bloodshed. At most, a few bruises and some dents in the armour. Zack chose me to wear Vitus' armour. And so I'm to choose a champion of my own? That sounds reasonable. Good. So let's agree on the time and place. Hold your horses, young fella. I've got a counter-offer for you. 
Now, I'm sure Zack is paying you well. Maybe I'm just doing it out of love for my neighbour. Aye, a regular good Samaritan, no doubt. I could pay you more. And I'd tailor make a Kiras just for you. What do you say? You mean if I fight as your champion instead? I'm not sure how Zack would take it. No, no, you fight on Zack's side and lose. That's not very honourable. And Zack's constant slander and mudslinging are the height of honour, are they? Zack might be acting the scoundrel, but why lower yourself to his level? You should show you're the better man. Better than that, upstart. I'm a master of my craft, boy. I've made armour for the lords of Kunsta. I've no need to prove anything to anyone. I'm here on behalf of blacksmith Zack. Zack? What does that madman want now? Don't tell me. It's another complaint about the master armourer. Well, you can tell Zack if you waste another minute of my time with that pathetic feud of his. I'll have him up for disrespecting the office of the bailiff. No, it's not a complaint this time. In fact, Zack came up with an idea to settle the dispute once and for all. Is that so? Well, that's a different kettle of fish. That's just what I was after. You have my full attention, friend. What's his plan? A duel. Jesus Christ! Has he lost his wits entirely? Zack is a madman, I can't deny it. But this would just be a duel with bludgeons. Nothing too dangerous. Now hold on a moment, young fellow. Zack is a respected tradesman. He doesn't do for folk to go around doubting his sanity. Certainly not his messenger boy. But apparently some folk are allowed to. Yes, the esteemed representatives of the township. Like the bailiff, for example. Aye, like me, for example. Zack chose me as his champion. I'll be wearing a suit of armour made by his son, Vitus, and I'll fight Otter's champion. Whoever falls first, loses. <laughs> that sounds like a fine spectacle for the village green. Naturally, I'll have to be present to ensure nothing untoward happens. <laughs> Your presence is certainly expected, Bailiff. We'd like you to referee the whole duel. Very well. We'll have it on the marketplace in the front of the church. Good citizens of Sassau! Our township has long been plagued by a protracted dispute. As you are no doubt aware, Zack, the blacksmith of the monastery courtyard, and master armorer Otto Rabstein have been, for some time, at odds. Ha ha! That is and songs, all right! And in so much as it behoves my office as bailiff to settle such disputes and maintain peace and order, I have decided to resolve the blacksmith's quarrel by unconventional means, whilst affording an entertaining spectacle. In short, we shall let them knock each other's teeth out. <laughs> However, since it ill befits two respectable tradesmen to maul each other on the market square like a pair of cocks on a dung heap, each of them has elected a champion. Zack, the blacksmith, has appointed to fight in his stead Henry of Scarlet and Master Otto Rabstein's champion will be... <laughs> Please, introduce yourself, Sir Knight. Master Otter will fight for Master Otter. I don't need some young pup to take my place. <laughs> I remind you that this will be a duel with bludgeons alone and until first blood is shed. Come, folks, be sensible for heaven's sake. We don't want any maiming here or, God forbid, murder. So, if both contestants are ready, let us begin. Oh! 
Kick that old bastard's ass, Henry. His ears will be ringing for a month. Now everyone will see who knows how to make armor and who's all hot air. You shouldn't speak so disrespectfully about Master Otter. He fought bravely. No need to get worked up about it. You've got to savor the victory, haven't you? Or you can steal Otter's armor and ruin his reputation. Now that's very dishonorable. How about if the armor for the bailiff mysteriously went missing? Jesus Christ! Don't even talk about it. Although, if Otter doesn't agree to the duel, it might be the only option. Exactly. And if you want to wreck Otter's reputation, not keeping his promise to the bailiff could be even worse for him than your idea. You're right. Do whatever you think fit then. But if the armor gets uh, lost, don't come to me afterwards. I know nothing about it, right? I heard that fine suit of armor Otter made for the bailiff disappear from his house. Jesus! The place is crawling with thieves these days. Thank Christ it didn't happen to me. <clears throat> but at least... Ah, I see what you mean. I'll come for my reward. Of course. And thanks again, lad. It's worked wonders for my trade. And will Otter sell you his business? I don't know. But the way things are looking now, his trade will soon be dead as a doornail anyway. So, out with it. How is it all arranged? One evening I got a visit from this scruffy beggar calling himself Rapota. He had a yellow cape on and kept whistling to himself. There was a knight with him too, but he didn't give his name. They told me what I had to do, how much I'd get for it, and I had to keep my mouth shut. Hmm. And where can I find this Rapota? Or the knight? I don't know exactly. But I've always left the wagon with the goods behind the monastery, on the hill there, next to a small chapel under a big tree. You could also take up Otto's offer to throw the fight, but that would lead to Zack being uncooperative and unavailable to come work for you in previous habits. Zack will confirm much of the information we got from the overseas hand, the bandit at the meeting point. Rapata is a name that keeps coming up. Master Faithfar on the meantime has arrived in town and can provide a further clue. So what have you found out so far? I found out where they get their quicksilver from. You were right, it was the monastery. Hmm. It was the only logical explanation. It changed hands on the hill behind the monastery. Have you been there to have a look around? I have, but I didn't find anything interesting. And have you found out who's behind it? Someone called Rapata. Not much, but it's a start. At least it's not a common name. I found out where they get the copper sheets from. Really? So tell me. It's the smith on the monastery craftsman's yard. He supplies the counterfeiters. Do you know how he gets the goods to them? It's the same as with the overseer. The goods were picked up by some servant called Rapata. Listen, Henry. I had another thought on the way here. Those counterfeiters have to have a punch die to make the fake coins. That's sophisticated work. And there's a man I know who works at the monastery yard. Master Engraver Jerome of Silesia. You don't suppose that he's... No, not that, God forbid. I know him well. He'd never do anything like that. But he runs an engraving workshop, so he might have heard something. Very well. I'll ask him. But ask with tact. I don't want him getting offended. How goes the work, Master? Getting there, getting there. You need something, my boy? What are you doing here, anyway? You're in an engraver's shop, my boy. We're engraving, of course. Yeah, but engraving what? And what's it used for? Oh, we engrave wood and stone as well as metal. Here in the monastery, it's mostly about decoration. You've got quite a large workshop, Master. You don't do all the work alone, surely. I'm usually here with my apprentice, Florian, 
Of course, by simple observation, you'll note that this is not currently the case, and I'm here alone, which means that either I'm a liar or something out of the ordinary has occurred. Um, I see. I think. So what's happened to Florian? He shares the fate of the pharaohs for today. The fifth scourge of Egypt did smite him. The plague. Or so his message advised me. Jesus Christ, the plague. Do remain calm. I'm quite certain the plague from which Florian is suffering wasn't a judgment from on high. Or if it was, it was a judgment on excessive drinking. I'm told such an ailment can be of truly biblical proportions. What's he like, your apprentice, Florian? I'm afraid that his exuberant youth has taken its toll. He's been acting strangely of late. I fear he has delusions of persecution. I don't really know what you mean, at all. Recently, for example, he told me that someone was following him. And the very next day he bought a padlock from the blacksmith and locked up his chest. As though I would ever sneak into it. In any case, why the interest? Are you looking for him? I have a message for him. A message? Who would be interested in that maestral? Other than his furious and deeply disappointed master, of course. About your question, you'll find him at home. No doubt feverishly dying. He sleeps in the baker's cellar. Does Florian have any enemies? A man such as he certainly owes money at every turn, and the parents of local girls are undoubtedly displeased with his attempts to propagate. However, most recently it was that fury from the baths who accosted him in quite a spectacular rage. The harpy nearly tore all Florian's hair out. I don't frequently feel sorry for my ne'er-do-well apprentice, but on that occasion I made an exception. She was screaming about some girl, some flighty bathmaid, Esther. I would say that Florian had felt the joys of spring and acted accordingly, although one would have thought they'd be used to that sort of thing at the bathhouse. Interestingly enough, the master's apprentice hasn't been at work and seems to have gotten himself in trouble due to some dealing at the baths. Speaking to the bath madam doesn't exactly lead to the story we might have expected. It seems that one of the bath maids has been kidnapped and it's all Florian's fault. Normally people don't resort to kidnapping bathmates, so there's clearly something amiss here. What am I doing talking to a pauper like you? I hear you're at odds with Apprentice Florian. At odds? I'll give you at odds. It's that sod's fault they took my Esther. Poor girl. I shudder to think what's become of her. This man came in wanting a bath, and Esther with it. She doesn't normally offer that kind of service, but I didn't see the harm, so I sent her in to him. And suddenly I hear screams. So I run out, and I see the bastard pulling her out of the tent and shoving her into a boat. They shouted at me to tell Florian that when he wises up, he'll get the girl back. I assume that Florian knows this, Esther. You know, village girls. They don't get much of a choice. Every other knave has a turnip for a brain. And if they don't, their relatives... And then some young dandy turns up who writes her little poems. What's the poor girl to do? And this is how it ends. She should have stuck with the turnip heads. What did the bailiff make of it? Don't even get me started on that. He's another fine... I won't say what. I told him everything, but he says he won't do nothing about it. How's that then? He wouldn't tell me to my face, of course. But people here don't think much of us. There's some as reckon my Esther deserves what she got. Poor girl. It sounds like you were close to Esther. I loved her like my very own. She came to me as an orphan, like a wolf child she was. I raised her and taught her and gave her a job, and now she's gone. Who knows if she's even alive? Turns out that Florian is indeed working for the forgers, but only because of the kidnapping. Getting his cooperation involves either tricking him with uh, vague promises that he don't have to keep, or actually rescuing the girl. No true knight would balk at the chance to rescue the girl. You look quite sprightly for an invalid. What? Who the hell are you? My name's Henry, and I'm making inquiries for Sir Radzig Kobola. And what do you want from me? Straight to the point then, all right. I've been investigating counterfeit money and the trail led me straight to you. Does the name Rapporteur mean anything to you? Um. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe? Don't bother. I know you know him. You make the punch dies for the counterfeiters. How do you hand them over? Do you know where their workshop is? I can't say anything. 
I'll deny everything and you've got nothing on me. No evidence, just accusations. It's got something to do with that girl, hasn't it? How do you know? That doesn't matter. No, I, I suppose not. I didn't want to get involved, I swear. Those bastards kidnapped Esther. If I don't cooperate, they'll kill her. I'm sorry about that. Me too. Listen, I'll tell you everything, I promise. But only if I know that Esther's safe. I know where they're keeping her, but nobody will help me. And what can puny little me do faced with those strapping great villains? Very well. So assuming that your Henry's a valiant knight, I off he goes to find the fair maiden. Please, just bring her back to me. Nothing else matters. She's trapped in an abandoned mining encampment. There's three bandits and several ways to rescue the girl. You can just batter them, but there's a hidden option if you question them. You have to leave exactly one alive. That includes no fleeing enemies. If you question the lone survivor, he'll tell you about a secret entrance to the counterfeiters den. This is the only way to get directions to it. Have you ever wondered why the sky is blue? No. I've got better things to do with my time. Well, think about it. God made the heavens, so he must have chosen a color. Well, blue is a pretty color. I like blue-eyed wenches. Aye. Oh, Although brown eyes are pretty too, but who'd want a brown sky? Jesus Christ, what's gotten into you today? Nothing. Sometimes I just think about things. Like why the swallows fly low before a storm. Maybe they're just trying to warn you to run and hide. That's true. Maybe they are. Please. Mercy. Tell me what you know and we'll see. Of course, of course. What do you want to know? Where's your workshop? In the mines. The mines are bloody enormous. I need a bit more than that. It's in an abandoned shaft. Outside there's a camp, but I was only there once at night. When they wanted us at the workshop, we went the back way. The back way? Aye. Not too far from here, there's a ventilation shaft. We mark the tunnels with chalk. That will take me all the way to the workshop? It will. Just be sure to keep the markings on your right. Got it. Who hired you? A knight. His name's Jezek of Ronoff. This Jezek, what can you tell me about him? Is he a nobleman? So he claims. So Jezek of Ronoff, he calls himself. I think he's from Moravia originally. The lad said he's a terror in those parts. Yeah, I never would have guessed. Margrave Yobst had Ronoff Castle raised, though. It ain't nothing but a ruin now. What do you know about counterfeiting money? Hardly anything. I know they do it in the workshop and they make a bloody good job of it. I always double check any coin I get from them. And you don't know anything else? No. We were hired near Kuttenberg by that fellow Jezek. We were supposed to kidnap the girl and keep her here, that's all. And what shall I do with you now? What? You'll let me go, won't you? Of course you will, you gave me your word. I didn't promise you anything. And even if I had, I'd lose no sleep over breaking my word to a thief. <laughs> I might have known. And what do you plan on doing with me? You're coming with me. I'm sure the Sassau bailiff can find some room for you. Unfortunately, you can't take both the girl and the bandit back to Sassau together. You have to make two trips to get them individually. Hey, who's there? Please, help me. They won't hurt you now. However did you find me? Florian told me where they took you. I'm a fool. I thought he was just a dandy, God knows why. And it turns out he's a villain in league with thieves. And a coward too. This whole time he knew where I was. For the love of Christ, will you be quiet? You should be glad you're still alive. Oh, you're not the saviour I imagined. Yeah, well life's full of disappointments. It's not Florian's fault. He was terrified they'd do something to you. They had him over a barrel. You're right. Poor Florian must have been more scared than me. I'd say so. We should probably set off. Well, blues are pretty the other way is to sneak the girl out. The patrols circle in a set pattern so you can easily find the window to make your escape. And do try not to leave the fair maiden to make her way back alone in the middle of a abandoned infested hellhole. Have no fear. I'm here to help you. Maybe Thank you. To warn you to run and hide. That's true. Follow me, Maybe they are. but be quiet. Thank you. I think we've gone far enough. 
This whole time, he knew where I was. You're right. If I were him, nothing could have stopped me coming for you. Exactly. What a pathetic coward. We should probably set off. I still have something else to take care of here. Go by yourself. I hope no one's lying in wait on the way. I couldn't bear to be recaptured. You've nothing to be afraid of. Once the girl is safe, Florian will be more than happy to help. And it turns out to be that Robota again. I found that Esther of yours. I know! Back already. How can I ever thank you? By telling me all about the goings-on with Rapata. They found me in the tavern one evening. Caught me when I went to the ship pile. They started to badger me about working for them. They? Yes, Rapata. And a night they called Sir Yezek. And then what? They explained what they wanted from me and I told them to sod off. I'm guessing that didn't go down too well. It wasn't all that bad. They just threw me on the dung heap and left. And I thought it was just a drunkard's joke. But then they took Esther. Where will I find Rapata? He's usually wherever I am. What does that mean? He watches me. Everywhere I go. And when I'm at home, he sits on the bench in the square, watching my house. So he's there now? Hard to say. Sometimes I see him in the tavern on the green, buying supplies. Alright. At least I know where to start. He's hanging around like a bad smell and flees when confronted. Are you Rapporteur by any chance? What do you want? I know that you spy on Florian. I know you were involved in the kidnapping of the bathmaid. And I know why you're doing it all. Ah. Uh, it seems there's no point making excuses. None. Now tell me where their workshop is. Uh, let's leave it for another time. He'll go for the exchange point we explored earlier. And if he didn't get rid of the bandits previously, they'll leap to Rapata's defense. What are you doing? Tired of life, are you? No, I give up! No, I give up! So, are you ready to talk? I will, I will. Just don't hurt me, please. What do you want from me? Don't worry. Your master won't be punishing you for betraying him. You're both going to have too many other problems. Who is your lord? So Yezhek of Ronoff. That's what he calls himself, although Ronoff Castle's long gone. Ronoff used to belong to Vincent, Count Lichtenberg. After his death, it fell to Margrave Jobst, and he had it pulled down. He knew full well that Vincent's vassals would resist him. Why? Everyone knows that when a lord dies without issue, the king can confer his estate on whoever he pleases. But Vincent had the sentence. Ronoff only fell to the Margrave because he declared them all illegitimate. All because Vincent had refused to fight for him against Sir Prokop. Sir Yezhek led a revolt of the vassals, but Yobs rounded them all up. Only Sir Yezhek got away. Since then, he's become the scourge of the domain. Who are you, anyway? They call me Rapota. I used to be the executioner's henchman in Brno. And how did you come to be serving Sir Yezhek? I helped him escape from prison. If I was going to serve anyone, better Sir Yezhek than the executioner. So you saw being a brigand's henchman as a step up in the world? I thought if things changed and he stopped marauding, he might get Ronoff back and take me into his service. Well, after this little escapade, you can forget about that. You'll be lucky if you don't end up swinging on the gallows. It's all the same anyway now. I've betrayed him. So who's Sir Yezhek working for? Don't tell me he just took it into his head one day to start forging coins. That's not for me to know. So Yezhek was on speaking terms with various lordships. Such as? We were often guests at the monastery, but I slept in the hayloft, so I heard nothing. And apart from that? Well, in the camp, you'd occasionally see a Hungarian nobleman, but I don't know what he was doing there, or who he is. Can I ask you something? I don't want to hang. It's a horrible death. I prefer you just kill me here and now. An honorable death? No chance. It's the dungeons for you and the sort of punishment a counterfeiter deserves. Don't worry, in time you'll be glad of the gallows. Getting rid of Rapata will be the last loose end before Henry confronts the counterfeiters in the lair. You can go by yourself, in which case it'll be a date with Sir Yejek. What do you want here? I don't know you. I'm here at the command of the royal hetman, Sir Radzid Kabila. Radzig Kobila, the king's hetman. 
<laughs> I see. I'm here to place you under arrest. I gathered as much. And you came alone. Ha! <laughs> Very daring of you, I must say. I'll manage. Sometimes even a king can be deposed without an army. So, I'm a king now, and you want to dethrone me? By the way, who betrayed me? The men who were holding the engraver's sweetheart. I knew that was a blunder. What they did was bound to get noticed. Well, never mind. It was nice talking to you. The company down here hasn't been terribly convivial. But I hope you don't imagine I'm just going to follow meekly after you like a lamb to the slaughter. That would be the more sensible choice. Well, I'm not a sensible man. I'd rather settle this in a knightly fashion. But I'm not a knight. I prefer to resolve the issue another way. What would people say about me, then? The noble Sir Yezhek gave up without a fight to a low-born lad? Have you ever watched a man die? More times than I'd care to. Why? In the end, they all shit themselves and roll around in a puddle of their own blood. Peasant and nobleman alike. True. I'll just have to hope that today it won't be the nobleman. We can go with Ulrich, in which case he'll take care of Sir Yejik. Jesus Christ, who are you and what are you doing here? I'm here at the command of the Royal Hetman, Sir Radzig Kabila. And who's he? That's no concern of yours. I'm sure we could come to some sort of agreement. Uh, I have plenty of coin. <laughs> we can come to an agreement that you'll keep your mouth shut. Oh. Uh. Oh. Uh. Please, don't take this personally. Wait! What? Do you want to do it? Be my guest. It gives me no pleasure. You can't kill him. I have orders to take him to Ratai. That is unfortunate. I have orders to kill everyone involved in this business. You can't do that! I have no choice, as you are aware. Why do you want to kill him? He may have valuable information. For that exact reason. My master does not wish this man to fall into the wrong hands, especially those of Radzik Kobila. You're a traitor. The world is not so black and white, boy. We were on the same side for a while, but no longer. That is how it goes. You can tell your lord the man is dead. He'll never find out. But he will. Or do you think you can lock this man away from sight until Judgment Day? Why not? Do not be naive, boy. Look around you. This land swarms with rats and snakes, especially now. There is no secret that is not for sale. If I let you have him, my own head will be on a spike before the month is out. I won't back down, and clearly you won't either. So there's only one solution. This time, it'll be a case of convincing Ulrich to spare Yezhev. Either by killing Ulrich, or convincing him to leave at the service of the Rosenbergs. You don't have to go back to the Rosenbergs. How do we know about the Rosenbergs? Master Feyfar recognized the writing on your letter of passage. Just as I said, there is nothing safe from prying eyes in this land. And where would you suggest I go? Into Sir Radzik's service. He needs people like you. I serve Kubila. Out of the question. If he learned of all that I did for the Rosenbergs, he would hang me from the nearest tree. But you are right, I do not have to return to the Rosenbergs. In fact, I cannot. Why not? I am a knight without a crest, without allegiance. No one was meant to know whom I serve. If the Rosenbergs hear that I have been found out, they will see to it I vanish. They cannot afford to be associated with me. Where will you go then? Where the road takes me. 
as I have many times before. Farewell, Henry. Auf Wiedersehen. Either way, he disappears from Henry's tale. Perhaps to be met again in a future sequel. Let's go. Master Faithfar is very keen to meet you. Good work, Henry. Thank you, Master Faithfar. It wasn't easy, I can tell you. I'll take some men and have a good look around there. And what should I do? You should get some rest and go to Rate. In the meantime, Sir Radzig will have this wretch questioned. Maybe he'll get something useful out of him. All right. I'll see you in Ratai then. Well, at least Henry's managed to cut off the bandit's source of cash. Now we're not at such a disadvantage anymore. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.